Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to Zion Fairwater. And a special salute to those who are joining us online. We're glad that you can join us today in whatever way you can. Man, those bells are loud when the windows are open, aren't they? How nice to have a glorious day like this. Anyway, we'll go on with announcements in a little bit, but for now, please stand as you are able for our entrance hymn. I'm sorry, we're gonna do a confession and forgiveness first. Sorry, Wendy. Oh, we're the tech people. No, you can stand up for the confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Sit, stand, this is aerobic worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We pause briefly to do some inner reflection. Most merciful God. Wait, sorry, it should be gracious God. Have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now let's do that opening hymn. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yeah. 
with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the scriptures. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and, reject, and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the, you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to give a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, who God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. The faith that is, in, is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as also did our rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The second lesson is from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not, <clears throat> did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has yet to be revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Here ends the readings. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among them. But they were startled and frightened and supposed they saw a ghost. And Jesus said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you question? Rise in your hearts. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, 
For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wonder, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to, of all these things. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up with me. Um, you can have a seat here. If anybody knows where the basket is that was hiding back here. It's in, inside there. Oh, got it. Thanks. It shrunk. Okay, you got to leave room for me. All right, I'll sit way over here. Thank you. So... How many of you here believe in ghosts? Raise your hand if you believe in ghosts. Yeah? The rest of you don't believe in ghosts? What happens at Halloween? Do you believe in ghosts at Halloween? We just got one believer here. Okay. What do ghosts look like? What do you got? They're white. See-through. See Ooh, that's a good one. What else do ghosts look like? How do you know if you encountered a ghost? What might it say? Or what kind of sounds might it make? What? Boo. Boo. That's a good one. How about... Ooh. Does that sound like a ghost? I'm pretty good at that. And you still don't believe, huh? <laughs> We've even changed one mind. I just read a story out of the Bible where the disciples thought Jesus was a ghost. Do you think Jesus is a ghost? No. Jesus was not a ghost. But the reason the disciples were confused is because they saw Jesus die, and then after he died, then they saw him alive again. Now the church has a big fancy word for that. The word is resurrection. Can you say it? Resurrection. Try it by yourself. Resurrection. Very, very good. And that means Jesus came back from the dead, but not as a ghost as a real, live human being. And so when Jesus came back, he had a little bit of time with the disciples to teach them every last little thing. And then Jesus gave them the power to go spread his message to the rest of the earth. If Jesus and those disciples wouldn't have done that, we wouldn't be here today. There would be no reason for us to be here because Jesus was just a ghost. But he wasn't. He was resurrected. And he gave his disciples the power to go out and tell everybody God loves them, God forgives them, God is with them. And now, then, after that, Jesus ascended into heaven. He went up to be with God in heaven. And then the disciples got really, really busy. And that's our job today, 
to go out and to share the message that God loves everybody. God forgives everybody. And when you get a little bit older, well, Junie, you get in communion now, aren't you? When you're old enough to take communion, you will take the bread and the wine, the body and the blood of Jesus, and Jesus will live in you. And so that will give you the power to go out and spread the good news, things you learn in Sunday school, things you learn in church, things you learn when you look at your Bibles. So that's a pretty big job we have to do. So I hope you come to Sunday school and to church and to all those wonderful things because we got work to do here. So I want to thank you for coming up here. And let's dive into the goodie, the goodie bag, basket. You can go back to your seats then. <laughs> I'll tell you what, take what's in your hand, let's go. You, you got it? We are very good at death. Yeah, you heard me right. We are very good at death. We may not like it. We may pray that it won't happen. But we still have to deal with it all the time. And therefore, we've become very good at it. We see daily shootings in the news. And of course, there are car accidents and wars and fires and floods. We hear about cancer and COVID and all other sorts of diseases that have brought death into our lives. We see death happening. We know it intimately in our families. We talk about it frequently, but life, life, that's a whole different story. Here we are three weeks into the Easter season, and our scriptures for the past three weeks have all been resurrection reports. It seems that nobody can comprehend this resurrection life thing, so we keep having to hear the story over and over. In every single report of the resurrection, we hear about the fear, the terror, and the shock that everyone in these stories experienced. And the truly amazing thing about today's gospel reading is that this one was Jesus' second appearance to those disciples. Jesus had already appeared to those disciples since his death. But the disciples still think he is a ghost. What does it take to believe in the resurrection life? Jesus is so wonderfully patient. And once again, he showed his disciples his body, invited them to touch him, proving he had real skin, real bones, and real wounds. Jesus even asked for something to eat to prove he wasn't a ghost, since ghosts don't eat. No one seemed to be able to comprehend that there could be life happening right before their very eyes. That life could be happening 
in the midst of death. Oh no, it wasn't death that frightened those disciples. No, what shocked them was life and the possibility of life. Like us, those disciples weren't surprised when death came. They had seen it, they knew what to do, they knew what was expected and how to behave. But what they couldn't handle was life. They no longer knew what to do and what was expected and how to behave. And the not knowing terrified them. Death, whether it comes quietly after a long, well-lived life, or suddenly in a blaze of bullets, or agonizingly with a knee to the neck, or slowly wasting away in a rehab center. These things no longer shock us. They're all too common. Yes, we will grieve, but they do not shock us. What shocks, alarms, terrifies, amazes, and makes us afraid and speechless is life. And especially the kind of life that Jesus offers us in the resurrection. Our coming to Christ changes everything. If we live in this world, being connected to Jesus, being touched by Jesus having been with Jesus in the scripture or Bible study, then the risen life of Jesus is not just some abstract idea. It's a concrete reality for us. And such a life is surprising, terrifying, and alarming because spirit-filled lives are unpredictable, risky, and they totally reverse the ways of the world. Such a spirit-filled life reminds us that life emerges out of death. Joy can be found in sorrow, and a life given away for others is a life given back. In that kind of reversal, we discover the divine hidden in things that our world has, caused, has said to be useless or negative. No wonder the disciples hid in fear. Something told them that following the risen Jesus would change every aspect of their lives forever. You know this. Life is just a whole lot more easier to live when we know exactly what to do, what is expected, and how to behave. But a life lived empowered and emboldened by the spirit of the risen Lord is unpredictable and risky. For that life is no longer ours, but Christ who lives in us. Having found the tomb empty, heard the message of the angel, seen Jesus walk through locked doors, the disciples hid, alarmed, terrified, amazed, afraid, speechless, not because there was a dead body there, but because of what was there, a risen Lord. It was life and the promise of new life that terrified them. As it should us. That life, that spirit-filled life, his risen life in us, that is the life he promises in his resurrection. That is the life we proclaim at Easter. That is the life 
that will shock us back to our senses and rouse us from death. Fear not, my brothers and sisters. Christ hasn't brought us this far to just abandon us now. Seek his new life. Trust in the power of the Spirit. Live the resurrection life. Amen. Please join in singing our sermon hymn. Our service continues with an order for holy baptism. So at this time, I'd like to invite the family members and the sponsors and any siblings or cousins that would like to come forward, um, please bring a hardbound green hymn book forward with you. Come on up. If you girls want to come up so you can get a good close look at what's going to happen here. There we go. We got ourselves a crowd. Okay, so you want to look for one, page 121. And you're going to want to look on the bottom of the page. Or otherwise you're going to be at hymn 121. Okay. So, in holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So I need all of you, sponsors and parents, to say, we present and give me his full name. We present Silas Allen Kolaj to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should, therefore, faithfully bring him to the services of God's house Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, 
As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the holy scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? I do, Amy. Sponsors too. All right, there we go. All right, and now we will say our prayers. The prayer response is, I will say, God of grace, and you will say, hear our prayer. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity and abundant life. God of grace, O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet could sustain life in all its varieties. The Holy Spirit has just come in. O God of grace, O God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief and hope, in sickness and uncertainty. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in our beloved community. God of grace. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our loved ones who have died, especially Edna Schwant, and we remember and share their love and comfort those who mourn. God of grace. We continue in the middle of page 122. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Um, holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that he who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of him who is cleansed by this water and bring him forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask that the entire congregation would now participate in the confession of faith. Would you please stand as you are able? 
I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the of sins, the of sins, the of life, and the life of our peace. Amen. Okay. We're all going to get involved in this, and if you want to join, um, we're going to be splashing around in the water. But the idea is to get it on the baby's head, okay? So everybody come forward, and Dad, if you can hold him somewhat so his little head tips back. Over here, turn your butt, there we go. We baptize you in the name of the Father. Go ahead, get your hands wet, get in there. And of the Son. of the Holy Spirit. We're now on page 124. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to share new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Silas Allen Polish. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. We need to anoint him now. Silas Allen Polish. You have been anointed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine And now we pray for mom and dad. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Would you please welcome with the words on the top of page 125. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same heavenly father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn to one another and share a sign of God's peace. You can blow that out. We don't want to burn anybody.
just a few announcements. Um, first of all, I just want to say that um, I'm going to be gone this coming week on continuing education. I will be available, uh, but if I'm in class or if I'm doing a recording or something, I may not get back to you right away. But it, especially if there's an emergency of some kind, please call me. Um, next week we will have uh, worship all set for you, but I won't be here. Um, hang on here. Please remember if um, you would like to be part of a caregiver support group, please see me. I will be getting that started in May. So you got a little bit of time to think about it. Um, also, perhaps you heard in the prayers that Edna Schwant has passed away, that's Keith's mother. So please hold that family in your prayers. Jen, do you have some things to share with us? Thank you. Good morning. Uh, just a few, oh geez, it looks really loud. <laughs> Somebody over there didn't shower, huh? <laughs> We're taking it inside. <laughs> Good morning. Um, just a few things. Uh, the biggie, of course, that I, that I got to get out there. This weekend is the youth group brat fry. And so the, it's a Friday and Saturday. And thanks be to God, I have, I have workers to come and help me on Friday. Um, Saturday is a bit scarce, as in me and two other people. <laughs> so um, please, if you have uh, an opening in your schedule at all on Saturday, especially around like the noontime hour, that would be fantastic. We really could use your help over there. Uh, considering that on Wednesday, I'm going to have knee surgery, so I'm going to be pretty much useless, I think, on Friday and Saturday. But I will be there, you know, cheering everybody on. Uh, on that note, also, if anybody has any baked goods that they're, you know, maybe could whip up. I'm not a baker. I don't just whip up quickly. But um, if you're driving by Brandon any time on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, and you'd like to drop off some baked goods, hip, hip, array. I could use those too. Um, thank you for everybody who has already brought in donations. There is a sign-up sheet back there. So if you can fill one of the time slots for a couple hours, or if you can bring you know, any of the things on the sign-up sheet, you know, like chips or um, baked goods, uh, please sign up. I'll have it back there. Everybody will be able to see it. And then um, also, so there's obviously no confirmation class on this Wednesday. Um, but the following week, I do have a couple of things scheduled. Next Sunday, we have BYG, which is the 4th through 6th grade, beginning youth group. And um, we have mini golf scheduled. So um, this would be your only chance to beat me, being that I'll be on crutches. So if you want to give it a shot, you should definitely try this Wednesday on the 23rd. Um, and then on the following Wednesday, which would be then the 26th, I think, is the number. Um, a confirmation class will have swim and serve. So we'll be doing a service project and then going swimming. So um, all those things are on the calendar. Everybody, you know, kind of is aware of that, what's coming up. But I just wanted to really stress that Saturday, please, if you can come and help at any time, that would really be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Oh, also, one more thing. Confirmation campers. Um, I'm sending a text out today, a little bit later on, that has a link to all the directions and information that I know you have shared already with your parents. But just in case you haven't, they can get it actually in print. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Are there any other announcements that need to be shared? Council members, please remember we got council meeting following worship today. All right, then, let us present our offerings to God.
please stand as you are able for the offertory. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving <clears throat> what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, holy God, almighty and ever living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all her creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the gifts of god for the people of god you are welcome at this table and then i say that 
I know we have a lot of guests with us here today. You are welcome at this table. The bread that we serve here is gluten-free, dairy-free, and nut-free, so it is safe for all. We have red wine and white grape juice. You may be seated, and would the communion assistants please come forward.
Congregation, please rise for the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. And now receive the final blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
professional license.